All right, let's cover the window watchdog. So let's go over the other method of using the watchdog. And if you go to our data sheet, the window watchdog works slightly different than the independent watchdog. At first, it's a little bit more confusing because it works based on, let's go down here on this graph, works based on this block diagram or timing diagram that you have over here. And pretty much what's going to happen is the following. Let me see if I can zoom in. You're going to start over here with a maximum counting. And let's say that, let's put it here, um, 127. Starts with 127 and it's going to down count. And what you need to guarantee is that you refresh so you reset your watchdog within this refreshing window when it's allowed to refresh. So you cannot do a refresh too early, you cannot do a refresh too late. So this value over here is predefined, this uh, 3F in exa is your, um, let me put here 63. Alright, so between 127 and 63. Now you can adjust this window here that allows you to do a reset during this part over here between whatever value put here and 63. Um, I'm going to write here the number 80 because that's the number that I'm using and then we know we can relate to this number. So I'm setting up this point over here to be 80. So between 127 and 80, I cannot do anything with the watchdog, but then between 80 and 63, I have a window allowed to refresh my watchdog. And uh, let's go over the code now. So I have a project here already uh, ready for you guys to test around. And it works similar to the independent watchdog. I initialize the LEDs, green, red, blue, and orange and I have my system timer to generate uh, interrupts at one millisecond. Again, watch the video about that, how to create this one. And then I configure my window watchdog. So here the setup is the same. I have, I'm toggling uh, an LED every 40 milliseconds and then I reset my watchdog counter. So let's go over the configuration here. So if you go to your library, drivers, source, and now we are using the window watchdog drivers. We will be following how to use the driver and it tells you to enable the clock. So it's based on the APB1 peripheral. So that's what I do over here. Initialize that one. Then use a prescaler, set the window. So I go here, set my prescaler. I'm saying that it's eight and then set my window value. So this is the value 80, the one that we just saw from the, from the slides. And then, um, and then you just make sure that you reset your counter at the right value. And that's what we do here with the set counter to the maximum counter 127. So let's go over um, these numbers over here, the prescaler, where am I getting these values? So if you go to the data sheet, they, tells you, they tell you here the formula to calculate the timeout, which is based on the clock of your watchdog source. And that's what I do over here. So the clock is going to be 42 megahertz. And then because I'm using frequency on my code, I divide by the 4096. They're using time, so they multiply times two to the bits that you are parameterizing for prescaler. So eight, if I scroll down, I have a table here and the prescaler that I'm using is eight. So that's why I'm using three bits here. So one, one, and I divide by eight and I get this clock frequency, 1,281 Hertz, which is roughly 780 microseconds. And uh, this table here is set it up for a clock with 30 megahertz. So we need to be careful. We're not using 30. We have 42 megahertz. So these timeouts here, they don't make sense for the way that we are running our watchdog. And 
and that's pretty much it this window now i can play around i'm playing around with this point over here and i can make it like go closer to 127 or go closer to the number 63 so depending how much you want to regulate here the refreshing window so if i do a couple of math here really quick my refreshing window needs to be between 36.6 milliseconds and 49.9 milliseconds and so any anything in between these times i'll be good to refresh my window so if i go to my toggle bit here i have 40 milliseconds so it's within the window everything is fine so i'm going to deploy the code inside of my board and i also have the oscilloscope connected to the green led press play and let's go back here so we can see it and here you go i have the level of the period because i have a delay of 40 milliseconds so i'm 40 milliseconds up 40 milliseconds down period of 80. now let's disrupt that value and see what happens so let's say that i don't do the counter in the time that i want so let's say i put 100 milliseconds here which which is way higher than 49 and let's press play deploy the code and if i try to now see that it just disrupts the our wave it's not even a square wave anymore because the cpu is resetting before actually that uh, code is completed so let's see what happens if i do a counter reset too fast too early so let's put 10 milliseconds let's compile and deploy the code go to our wave and same thing happens here notice that my period is no longer 20 which should be 20 and we also disrupt your wave so two different ways we learn two different ways of doing watchdog the independent and the window which one is the best depending on the application that you have uh, but now you know how they work and how they operate so you can choose the watchdog that best suits your application